Hello Internet and welcome back to my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Today we'll be talking about the crafting menu, why it's important, how to navigate it, and probably most importantly I'm going to point out the search function abilities which many people don't seem to know even exist. And yeah, settle in, it's uh, probably going to be a long video, and uh, of course there should be timestamps on this video, so if you hover over the timeline you will be able to jump to whatever you want to know. So up front here let's touch on the value of crafting. So in Cataclysm, you're going to spend a lot of time gathering supplies by looting buildings and zombie corpses, things like that. You're going to be able to find a ton of stuff very easily in this game. And it makes sense in the lore of Cataclysm, most people are, are they're dead. So naturally all their stuff is just sort of laying around and is yours for the taking. Now that said, there will be times when you can't find that one elusive item that you're looking for. There will be times when the thing that you want is too niche of an object and very rare. In these situations, you may be able to actually craft the item yourself completely from scratch. Other times, it is just easier to craft an item yourself than go out looking for it. For example, sure, you can go out and you can gather a bunch of soda and juice from the world, but it's much easier to just get water in large quantities from ponds or rain or whatever, and then boil that yourself. It's just much easier. And that is the value of the crafting menu. Anyway, you can access the crafting menu by pressing the ampersand key on your keyboard. That is this symbol, and on US keyboards, it's located on the number row at the top of the keyboard, sharing a key with the number 7. Now, the crafting menu is divided into tabs, and then each tab is divided into subcategories. You can navigate between the tabs using the tab key to move right and shift tab to move left. The subcategories are navigated using the left and right arrow keys and the recipe list uses up and down to go to move your cursor. When the cursor slash indicator is over a recipe, relevant information will be displayed in the center of the screen and on the right side of the screen. When you find the recipe you want to craft, you will press enter on it to craft it once. We'll touch on some other controls later like batch crafting, but for now let's go over this display. Here's an example screen from the crafting menu and I'm just going to give a general overview of what we're seeing here. At the top we have the tabs broken down into categories. Beneath that we have subheadings or subcategories which will be different depending on which tab that you're on. The light gray or white or whatever this is means that there are recipes contained in that area and the dark gray means that you don't currently know any recipes that fit into that subcategory. On the left we will have a list of recipes in this subheading. White items mean that you're currently capable of crafting that recipe in this exact moment because you have all the required tools and components within your crafting radius. It does not mean that you will succeed, it just means that you have the materials. Crafting radius, by the way, is within six steps of the character. I'm not sure if line of sight matters, but most of the time you're going to have all this stuff right around you anyway. Uh, in regards to failure, uh, for instance, your skills might be too low and you might have a chance of failure even if the recipe is white. Grayed out options are recipes that you cannot currently craft because you lack crucial components or the tools required. And again, for future reference, the crafting menu uses any available materials that are within six steps of where your character is currently standing. So if you left your wrench outside 10 tiles away, it will not be available for use in your crafting recipes. Now in the center of the screen, we can see information relating to this specific recipe's crafting process. And I suppose we should probably go over this line by line, I guess. First, we have the primary skill. This is the main skill required to craft the recipe. In parentheses, there are two numbers. The first is your current skill level, and the second is the recommended skill level. If your skill level is greater than the required skill, you will not gain experience for crafting the item, but you will also not fail when attempting to craft it. Actually jumping in here as the editor, that is not actually true anymore. If you're on older versions of the game and you have the required skill to craft that item, you will be guaranteed to craft, there will be no failure. However, since we now have proficiencies, this is no longer the case in most recent experimentals. You will not receive skill experience if your skill level exceeds that of the recipe. However, you you can still fail the recipe if you do not have the proficiencies that are required and we will talk about proficiencies not only in their own video but we'll touch on that a little later here in a moment and you will still gain progress towards learning that proficiency even if your skill level exceeds what is required for the recipe and again proficiencies will have to cover in their own video 
But in general, you will do much better crafting an item that you have the skills for than if you do not have the skills. That is what you should take away from this. If your skill level is lower than the required skill, you're gonna be much more likely to fail at crafting and you will often lose materials, which will make the overall time to craft take much longer. And of course, if you don't have replacement materials for what you lose, you may not be able to finish the craft at all. Now these will be color coded for easy reading. Green means that your skill is adequate. Yellow means that it is not. The next line is other skills. Now, as far as I know, this contributes to your failure rate as well. It doesn't come up all that much, at least in my experience. Many recipes only have a primary skill. They don't have this other skill line at all. If this does anything else, I, I don't know what it is, and it probably will have a minimal impact on your gameplay. I've been playing for years, and I have never paid attention to this at all. Next up, we have the proficiencies section. Now we will be covering proficiencies in their own video, but they are relevant for crafting. Some recipes have proficiencies attached to them. If you have the proficiency, it will be listed under the proficiencies used line. And if you lack a proficiency, it will appear, appear under proficiencies missing. Man, if I say proficiency one more time, the gist of this is that crafting takes a long time. Having a proficiency speeds up crafting and makes you less likely to mess up and lose materials. You can see the increased failure rate and the increased like time multiplier listed next to each proficiency and they do stack. Additionally, if you have a proficiency and it's listed under the used section, it will still display the failure rate, but it will be grayed out and it will not apply to that recipe. Next up, we have time to complete. This shows an approximate time for how long crafting the recipe will take. Now this does take into account the multiplier from your lack of proficiencies. However, if you mess up the recipe and you lose progress and consume materials, that will make the overall crafting time take longer. Next line is batch time savings. Normally when you craft multiple items at once with the batch command, which we'll talk about later, it will simply repeat that craft. This means that crafting two of the recipe will take twice as long. However, if that recipe has a batch time saving attached to it, crafting in a batch will take less time than crafting the same number of items individually, and this just gives you an idea of how much time you're going to save. The next line, recipe makes, does not appear on all recipes. This will tell you how many of the item the recipe crafts during each individual craft, which sounds confusing. For instance, if I craft salt from salt water, the recipe will give me 100 portions of salt. If I use batch crafting to craft the same recipe five times, I will receive 500 portions of salt. Not every recipe has this entry, and if there's nothing listed here, then you will only receive one of the item. Most items are crafted one at a time. For instance, if I make a two by sword, I'm only making one of that item. Now, craftable in the dark will display if you can craft this item without any light. Now, most recipes will require some amount of light in order to craft them. In fact, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that you can craft in the dark, but that is what this line is for. The nearby line shows how many of the finished product are nearby. Generally, it's not something you will pay attention to, but it does help when you're trying to craft an item and then this pops up and it shows you that you already have one laying around your base. After this, you will see tools required. Now these are the tools and tool qualities that are required for the recipe. These items are not consumed when you craft the recipe, although if they have a battery or fuel, that may be partially used up. Some things in this list will be a specific tool, such as metal tongs. Others will reference a tool quality like hammering two, which is a requirement that can be satisfied by any tool with the level of quality that you require. And then there are some tools that will be listed in a line to indicate that you only need one of the items from the list. Most food items, for instance, will have a pretty long list of heat sources. You will only need one of those items in order to craft the recipe. This is just because of the way the game is set up, but it really can clutter up this menu, especially when you have multiple tool lists that can involve five or 10 tools or sometimes way more than that. Whenever you come across a recipe that extends off the screen, it will usually be due to that sort of thing with just a huge list in the middle of the screen. You can scroll up and down in this uh, menu using the square brackets, by the way, it will scroll this entry up and down. Additionally, some items will also have charges listed next to them. This will just show you how many charges of battery or fuel are going to be consumed when you craft that recipe. Tools that you currently have will be color coded in green to show that they are close enough to where you're standing to be used in the recipe. The next section will be components required. These are the ingredients that will actually be consumed when you craft the recipe. These again will be broken down into lines. 
lines. Now each angle bracket listed here shows one line of components. All recipes will require specific items, but when multiple ingredients are used in a line like this, it means that they are interchangeable, so you only need one item from that line. Now the number in parentheses will indicate how many of the item are required for crafting, and anything that's highlighted in green is something that you have within range for the craft. It's important to remember that if you fail to craft the item, you may end up wasting some of the materials. So let's say you want to make fruit juice, but the only fruit that you have is one single apple. Well, that's enough to craft the recipe, but if you fail and waste some materials, you might end up not being able to finish the craft because you've wasted the only apple that was available to you. Now, I'm not a fan of how often you waste materials in this game, and I find it extremely frustrating when it happens. Just be aware that if you're using your only components, there is a chance you will be unable to finish what you were working on. Okay, so that's, that's it for the middle section. Let's now talk about the right side of this screen. Here we see the final product of the craft. This is what you will receive upon completing your work. Now this contains a wide variety of information and it will be completely different depending on what you're working on. So I'm not going to go over all of the information that can be displayed here because it would be very time consuming. Food items will display differently from weapons will be displayed differently from clothing. Now the only thing I really want to point out here is for food items. Now unlike most items, when you craft food, it actually inherits information from the items that you use to craft it. So for example, let's look here at meat pizzas. If I craft a meat pizza using canned chicken, the final product will have X number of calories. If I craft pizza with all of the same materials, but I use chunks of meat instead of chicken, the calories on the final meat pizza will be different. Calories are inherited based on the component parts. So food that is crafted with a higher calorie ingredient will produce a higher calorie final product. Now this is why you don't see exact calories on the right hand side. Instead, it will show a range to illustrate that things will be slightly different depending on how you craft them. Similarly, let's say that you chose to make your pizza out of human meat instead of canned chicken. Not only would the final product have a different number of calories, it would also be a cannibal dish instead of a normal pizza. That is because it will inherit this cannibal trait of using human flesh, and in fact, all of our cannibal meals get different names. So the final product would actually be called Poser Pizza, because cannibal and mutant meat dishes in the game, they kind of have these funny names to them. Now the craft is exactly the same. It's still meat pizza in your crafting menu, but that final product will vary based on your ingredients. It inherits these important things from its component parts. That's why using human or mutant meat in most meat recipes will result in a final product that is also a mutant or cannibal product, if that makes sense. Now at the bottom of the screen here, we can see some additional controls. Return, as stated, will craft the recipe that you have selected, assuming you're able to do so. Pressing E will open the item information for the final product of whatever you have selected. Most of that information is displayed on the right hand side of the screen, but sometimes you want to look at the full entry. Pressing F will allow you to filter items, which you can also access by pressing the forward slash key. Now this is incredibly important and is the fastest way to navigate the crafting menu. This is what I do 99% of the time when I'm trying to craft something. Simply type the name of what you want to search, hit enter, and it will change your recipe list to the search results. Now you should really take note of the various other things that are listed in this search window. You can search your crafting menu using a letter followed by a colon to search something more specifically. For instance, if I wanted to search for tools that I can make that have the digging quality, I would type in Q colon dig and hit enter. This will display a list of tools that have the digging quality. Like I said, there's quite a bit here that you can do, so I recommend that you read all of these options. In my personal play, I use P colon the most to sort recipes by a specific skill that I'm trying to raise. I also sometimes use C colon so that I can search for recipes based on component. For instance, you might harvest some chunks of meat and wonder what they can be used for. So if you go to your crafting menu and into the search and you type in C colon chunk of meat and you hit enter, this will display a list of recipes that you currently know that can use chunks of meat as a component. Now I cannot overstate this, the search function in the crafting menu is incredibly valuable and many players don't even seem to realize that you can do many of these things. Read this section, you will be glad that you did and it will improve your ability to get through the crafting menu. 
Now pressing R will reset your filter. In other words, if you search for something and it's displaying only what you search for, you can press R to clear your search and return to the normal way that the menu looks. Next are some controls for the new feature of the search menu. When you learn recipes for the first time, they will appear in this menu with a tag next to them saying that they are new. Pressing lowercase v or moving your cursor over an item will remove this tag. Pressing capital V once will prompt you to clear all new tags in the current tab, and then pressing it again will allow you to clear all tags on all recipes. Pressing lowercase u will let you sort your current list by putting recipes with the new tag at the top of the list. And you may be sitting there saying, well, how do I get new recipes? Well, as of the time of this recording, there are only a few ways to get recipes. Sometimes when you disassemble items, you will learn their recipe. Taking it apart allowed you to understand the concept of putting it back together yourself. Other crafts will be automatically learned when you reach a certain skill level. For example, as of this recording, you will learn to craft a knit hat automatically when your tailoring level reaches skill level 1. It doesn't matter if this level was gained at character creation or if you learned it mid-game, you will still have access to that craft. And then the main way that you will learn recipes is through books. Some recipes only appear in books. When you first find a book recipe, you will need to have the book nearby to craft that item. But once you craft the item once or a few times and you have the right skills, you may memorize it, meaning that you don't have to have the book nearby anymore in order to craft that particular item. Now when this happens, there will be a pop-up in your message log to let you know that you've memorized the recipe. Most of the time though, you will be keeping your books nearby where you craft, so it probably won't matter very much if you memorize something. Next up, we have the ability to hide and restore recipes by pressing the lowercase s key. If you have a recipe selected with your cursor and you press the s key, it will be removed from this list. Now many people press this by accident and then they don't know where their recipe went. If you go to the very first tab in the crafting menu marked with a asterisk, you will see a subheading called hidden. Any recipe you hide will move to this area and if you select something in the hidden section and you press S again, you will restore it to its original position. Now I don't often hide recipes because mostly I use the search function to find what I'm looking for, but this is an option if you want to clear unused recipes from your lists. Now in a similar vein, you can favorite recipes that you frequently use so that they're more easily available. Pressing asterisk while a recipe is highlighted will transfer it to the favorite section of this menu. Now that is also located under the asterisk tab at the far left of the menu. Pressing asterisk again will remove the favorite tag. And then finally, one of the most important keys in this menu that you will be using pretty much constantly is lowercase b for batch crafting. Move your cursor over the recipe you want to craft and press B to bring up the batch menu. You can batch craft up to 50 items at once. It used to be 20, but this has been improved. Now, if you move the cursor over the number you want, the recipe's requirements will change in the center of the screen to show that you'll be using more materials to make more items. As I mentioned before, some items have batch time savings, meaning that crafting, say, 10 of the item will not simply multiply the time investment by 10, it will be reduced slightly depending on the recipe. Now, I do have a few words of warning about batch crafting. First of all, if you craft 50 of something, you need to understand that depending on what it is, it may take a very long time to finish crafting. Sometimes you only need two of an item right now, but you will need more of them later. It is often better to craft only what you need in the moment and then make more when you need them. All right, second, when you craft an item in Cataclysm, it will spawn an in-progress craft item. If you stop crafting, you will have this partial progress item in your inventory or on the ground nearby. This abstracted item's weight and volume are based on what you were trying to craft. So if you're crafting something large, say an anvil, and you batch craft 50 of them for God knows why, well the resulting in progress item will be massive and unwieldy and you may not be able to resume crafting very easily. I would avoid batch crafting large and heavy items as they are very annoying to move around if you need to stop mid craft. And finally, in terms of controls, you can press the question mark key for a list of controls specific to this menu. Again, this works in almost every menu in Cataclysm. Try to remember that you can press the question mark key to get contextual controls. Okay, now that we've talked about the menu, let's give some general information about crafting. This is already a long video. Thank you everyone who's still bearing with me. Thanks for staying. If you're in the middle of crafting, you can press five or the period key to stop what you're doing. When you stop in the middle of a recipe, you will be left with a partially crafted item, as I said before. Now, you cannot disassemble a partially crafted item. 
People were previously using this system to exploit food items, so yeah, it's a bummer that you can't take them apart, but it is what it is. Additionally, food items will continue to rot even if they're locked in this partially crafted state, so you cannot use this to exploit food spoilage. Now, resuming your craft can be done by wielding the partially crafted item and activating the item with the lowercase a key, or you can drag it to a suitable surface and resume crafting by examining with the lowercase e key, the table or whatever surface you've placed it on. Now we will mention that again here in a moment as we discuss that a little bit further, but again, this is where crafting huge batches of items can be a problem. It is possible to make an item so large in this partially crafted state that it will no longer fit on tables and you'll have to craft it on the ground. And that's important because the speed at which you craft things is mostly, it's mostly affected by your proficiencies. Having the proficiencies required for a recipe will make the whole process much faster, but you can also impact crafting speed by working on appropriate surfaces. And that is where tables and workbenches come into play. The surface you're crafting on will change your efficiency when you're crafting an item. Now I'll put this list on screen. I don't know if it's still 100% accurate. Please, please don't take this as rock solid truth. This may have changed since I wrote it down. I think I originally copied this from like a, a dev like a year ago plus however long it's going to be between me making this and you watching it. But regardless of what the exact numbers are, you can see that crafting on the ground is less efficient than crafting on a nice table. Now a good table is also worse than a full on workbench. Workbenches are the best. So in general, if you're going to be crafting, you will want at bare minimum to drag a table over next to you to use as a work surface. If you're in a mobile base in a vehicle, you can build a workbench inside of your vehicle. And when you try to craft an item next to a table or a workbench, it will automatically place the item as you craft it on that surface so that you'll get the bonus from crafting on a good in a good position. Always try to have a surface nearby. It really does speed things up over the length of the game. Now on that note, if you walk up to crafting surfaces in the game and you press the lowercase e key to examine them, a menu will pop up asking you what you want to do. You can initiate crafting from this menu, though I, I never do personally. The main benefit of this is that once you have a partially crafted item you can drag it to a table or whatever place it on there and then examine them to resume the craft now i do this all the time when i need to stop mid craft and i want to reposition to a surface that will give me a better bonus oh and i think we're about ready to wrap here but i just want to quickly plug the item browser and the hhg websites one more time in this video the hitchhiker's guide to the cataclysm which i showed images of in this video is the best place to find recipe locations if you look at an item entry on this website and you scroll down it will tell you whether the recipe is auto learned or found in a book what skill levels are required all the component recipe ingredients things like that this resource is amazing and I use it all the time when I can't remember how to get a particular recipe really check this out it's very good and it will help you as you play I think that's all I have to say about crafting at the moment. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. This is a long video. Uh, it's a pretty important menu that you will be using kind of a lot. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll be back with more tutorials in the near future. Smash that like button on your way out and I'll see you next time.